Okay, 4.3b, which is our last day of talking about this topic, um, solving by factoring. Uh, it does not mean that you know everything is um, over in terms of your practice, but it just means that we have to move, and this is where the pace will start to become an issue. Make sure you remember what's most important, and that by Friday you have at least the general concepts down so that you can get everything you need. Uh, yesterday we went over the basic process of factoring. We learned that grouping method, which is what it's called. We learned that it works with most quadratic functions. I think, yeah, pretty much all of them. Well, not most, not, not all. So we saw a couple of times that there were shortcuts, but overall the grouping method will get you the factors that you need. Quick review. The first step we were supposed to do was translate this into a combination by saying we're looking for numbers that multiply to be negative 30 and add to make negative 1. At that point, if you needed to make a factor tree, you could by just doing 1 times 30, or 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 4 doesn't go, 5 times 6. The fact that it makes a negative 30 means the signs are different. The fact that it's a negative 1 means that your big number is, or big side is negative. If the signs are different, these are what we're looking at. And we found out how to pick the number that actually worked as negative 5, and po or positive 5 and negative 6. That was solving the combination. The next thing we did was we expanded the x or the middle term so we wrote it as 2x squared plus 5x minus 6x minus 15 we then split and factored so again we split it in front of the sign we factored the GCF out of this which meant that we took an x off leaving 2x plus 5 copy the sign taking 3 out of this with 2x plus 5 and what we learned even though that's a minus is that you typically just copy it over and do a real quick check negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 negative 3 positive 5 is negative 15 and the last thing we did was we took off what they had in common and then put the other information in the parentheses I hope that that worked for you I hope that that helped you to understand it because again it's very important that you know how to factor and that you understand the process clearly uh, and in a clean way and so I hope that helped uh, if not like I said make sure you get your assistance as soon as you can um, solving a quadratic function by factoring is a natural step uh, of evolution if you consider the following situations if I was told that a times b equals zero one of two things has to be true either a equals zero or b equals zero because if a equals zero I don't care what b is at one times or zero times one is zero zero times a hundred zero zero times negative a hundred zero zero times any fraction so on and so forth as long as b is equal to zero it doesn't matter what a is and so this answer is that this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero which means both of them can equal zero but the bottom line is one of these has to equal zero same thing here if x times y equals zero that means that x equals zero or y equals zero and so there you have again the situation where as long as this is zero we don't care what that is as long as this is zero we don't care what that is mnp equals zero again same thing i'm not going to write it and you can if you want that would be m equals zero or n equals zero or P, I guess I will write it, I lied. Um, but either way, that is what you're looking at because, again, if m is equal to 0, it doesn't matter what those two are. If n is equal to 0, it doesn't matter what those two are. If p is equal to 0, it doesn't matter what those two are. And then expand that out to this one, where if you have four things multiplied, it keeps going and it keeps going. This is all based off of a concept that you use in factoring, in that if two or, thing, two or more things are multiplied to be 0, then one of them must equal zero. Because of this, again, we get multiple answers. So based on the factors, based on, sorry, we get multiple answers based on the number of factors. Let's look back at our introductory question real quick in a different form. Uh, you have 2x squared minus x minus 15 equals zero, which is the same exact question as what we have here. The only difference is that it equals zero. So first off, let's look at our calculator and kind of see what's going on with this. If I were to graph this question, uh, 2x squared, minus x minus 15 and graph it and go to my second trace and um, second trace I almost lost myself and then you go back to the left side of this finding your x there right side did I just mess up again yes I did it's been a while so again finding your left side hit enter move over to the right side hit enter and you see that your first answer is negative 2.5 I'll write that on here real quick. And then you see that your second answer is 3. Now 
here's what I know. If I were to plug negative 2.5 into this original part, 2, I'm sorry, go back to here, 2 times negative 2.5 plus 5 equals 0. Notice how that equals 0. And if I plug a 3 in there, 3 minus 3 is equal to 0 also, which means plugging in negative 2.5 makes this factor 0, which means that 0 times anything is 0. Plugging in 3 makes this factor 0, which means 0 times anything is 0. So I did that just to kind of give you an idea before I go that this works. So what we're looking at here, I'm going to put the factors in first, is that after you do the factoring, so I'll put three dots because you know how to factor it with 2x plus 5 and x plus, I'm sorry, minus 3 equals 0. What you must do now if you are solving, because you cannot lose the equal 0, because if it doesn't have the equal 0, you're just factoring. But once you get the equal 0, you literally put what we put at the bottom also here. Everything is kind of connecting. Where AB equals 0, you put A equals 0 or B equals 0. Same thing. This represents A. So 2x plus 5 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. Again, this has to equal 0 or this has to equal 0. And then you use your algebra. Minus 5, minus 5. 2x equals negative 5 divided by 2. And x is equal to negative 5 halves there is your negative 2.5. On the other one, add 3 to both sides, x equals 3, and there is your second answer of 3. So again, the solving part is simply taking your factors and saying that if this times that is equal to 0, then this must equal 0, or this must equal 0, and find your answers. All right. So without trying to kill all your time, I just want to kind of give you time to practice more than anything else. So let's get to some key things here. Number one, the original equation must equal zero. Some things that I know people are going to mess up on and have issues with. Again, the first thing is that the original equation must equal zero. So now that we understand how to solve by factoring or that we've seen how to solve by factoring, uh, the trick questions that are waiting for you, what if you're given a problem like this? A times B is equal to two. Well, A could equal one and B could equal two. A could equal two and B could equal one. A could equal four and B would equal one half. A would equal eight and B is equal to one fourth. B could equal 4 and A is equal to 1 fourth. There are so many options on that that it really does not help. And so if it equals a number, there are too many number combinations at work and you really just end up driving yourself crazy. So again, this doesn't work because there are too many options. It only works when multiple is set equal to 0. Imagine the x squared as an elephant on a boat. To draw you this picture and love how you will talk badly about me after you see it, but let's say this is a boat and this is a huge elephant head, trunk, ears, ears, and that there's a bunch of stuff over here. If this elephant is standing on a boat in the water, chances are if it's the biggest thing on the boat, which it is an elephant, so it probably is the biggest thing on the boat, that the boat is going to tip this way. And once the boat tips down, it means that everything on the boat is probably going to fall towards the elephant. So if you want to imagine x squared whenever you're solving anytime you have to solve imagine x squared as an elephant everything's going to fall to one side so you have to look at it as in this problem here x squared is here there's your elephant which means that we must move our 3x by subtracting 3x we must move our 6 by subtracting 6 and then put it in our standard form so 4x squared minus 3x minus 6 equals 0 and now in terms of the sides everything has rolled over to the left side because that's where the elephant was, that's where the x squared was. So 3x became negative, 6 became negative, and that's all. Same thing here, 5x squared plus 3x equals 7x minus 4. You have an elephant over there, there's a 5x squared or x squared, which means again it's very very big, so it's going to pull everything in its direction. So what happens is you move your 7x over here by subtracting it, you move your 4 over here by adding it, you end up with 5x squared, minus 4x and then plus 4 equals 0. Again, must have got to have the equal 0, otherwise it's not solving anymore, it's factoring. So again, move your 7, make it negative, it turns into negative 4. Move your 4, make it positive. That would now be ready for you to do whatever you needed to do. And even in this one, you have two elephants, but you need to keep in mind which elephant is the strongest or the biggest. 5x squared is bigger than 2x squared, which means everything is going to go over to this side. And so you will subtract your 2x squared, you will subtract your 8x, and then you'll put it in standard form. You end up with 0 equals 3x squared minus 8x minus 3. 
And so again, that's the general idea of what you're getting into whenever you have to solve and they want to throw a trick problem at you, is that it must equal zero because if it does not equal zero, then you cannot factor it and then find out what's going on. Again, if I had something like x plus 1 times x minus 3 equals 2, there are so many combinations that you can't possibly get it. Once it equals zero, then you can actually do what you need to do. All right. The other trick that you need to care be careful about is that sometimes in these things you have to factor a GCF first. Uh, when you learn how to factor in Algebra 1, you learn that the first thing you're supposed to look for is a GCF. I know I did not teach that, but that's because the factoring process was so important. Uh, but the first thing you're supposed to do is look for a GCF, and that means before you do anything at all, you're supposed to ask yourself if you can take anything out of the equation. So looking at the example here, find the x-intercepts of this problem, and we are going to actually find them. But the first thing you should notice is that each one of these things has an x on it. And then from there, you can now go ahead and try to factor this as looking for numbers that multiply to be 18 and add to be negative 11. Obviously, we know those numbers to be 2 and 9. That means the signs are the same. That means both of those are negative. I am going to now take this and factor it, ignoring the x. Now, my x is going to come down. Do not lose it, because that's important. But I am going to go ahead and do my work from here. 3x squared minus 2x minus 9x plus 6 equals 0, which turns into x times 3x minus 2 minus 3 times 3x minus 2 equals 0, which turns into 3x minus 2, x minus 3 equals 0. And again, do not forget your x, because here's what you, here's what you will learn at some point. X to the third means there's a potential of three answers. Just like X squared means there's a potential of two answers. Notice this only had two factors, but once you bring down the X, you have one answer here, one answer here, and one answer here. Now you have three things equal to zero. Where did we see that before? Let me go back through my stuff that I just found. We had MNP equals zero. That means M equals zero, or N equals zero, or P equals zero. Pretty much, again, as long as it equals zero, set everything equal to zero. So we will do X equals zero, or 3x minus 2 equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0. And that is the only transition you have. That is your first answer. Then you'll do plus 2 plus 2, 3x equals 2, dividing by 3x is equal to 2 thirds. And then, of course, here x is going to be equal to 3. And just to prove that it works, I will do my calculator work here uh, 3 times. Uh, 0 to the third. Actually, I don't think I need that because putting 0 in is obvious. That's going to be a 0. That's going to be a 0. That's going to be a 0. So it works. But I will do the 3. So 3 times 3 to the third. You have to use the caret here. There's no other way to do that. Minus 11 times 3 squared plus 6 times 3 equals 0. If I was to do that again, 3 times 2 thirds. Remember, we have to put our fractions into um, parentheses to the third minus 11 times 2 thirds plus 6 times 2 thirds equals that's not good uh, 3 I think I forgot to square my 11 so either way uh, second enter go back to this part here where it should be a squared and insert a squared and let's see there's your 0 if you want to know how I did that, again, insert is there, second, delete, which opens up your cursor to int to put whatever you need in that spot. Either way, that is how you find the x-intercepts, but again, the key thing was we had to see what we could do first. And then, the last question on this, actually, I guess it's not the last problem on this, what are the zeros of 6x squared equals 8x? First thing, again, you have an elephant, everything's now on the same side, so we need to rewrite this as 6x squared minus 8x equals 0. We will then look and say, hold on, you can take something out of this. 6 and 8 can both be divided by 2, and both of these things have x's. You end up with 3x minus 4 in the other part, and now it is actually set up and factored for, prop for your solution. So 2x equals 0, or, because that's your first factor, 3x minus 4 equals 0. Here, when you divide by 2, you end up with x equals 0. Here, you end up with 3x equals 4, which, when you divide by 3, you get 4 thirds. 
those are your two answers. How did I know I could have, and I didn't say will have, but could have two answers, is that it says x squared. And again, that's what you need to keep in mind. All right. Target problems from this section. Now that we have an idea what's the most important, let's look at what else is going to be asked of you that has to float around this topic. Create a quadratic equation that has the roots of negative 5 and 6. Roots, remember, are the same as x-intercepts, which is the same as zeros, which is the same as solutions. They're all the same word, if you remember. And so what that means to me is that negative 5 should work and 6 should work. Here's what I know. I know that when we did the nice number like x minus 3, our answer was 3. So if my, my solution was 3, that means my 0 was 3, which means my roots and all those other words are 3. And notice all it did was it connected to a factor of x minus that. So putting that back in as its opposite made it work, which means I am going to say that negative 5 turns into x plus 5 because if I put negative 5 in here, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. Same thing for 6. If 6 is a root or a 0, then I will put x minus 6 because putting 6 in here makes it 0. And then here's this part. Now, of course, that's not the equation that they want because they want it all the way expanded, which means that we now must do our x squared minus 6x plus 5x um, minus 30. Put these two things together. And there is your quadratic equation. All right, so again, not tough, not hard. You just have to make sure you know what you're looking for. So again, if they give me my zeros, simply take those zeros and put them in parentheses as its opposite because, again, you want this combined with that to equal 0. So negative 5 plus 5 is 0, which is why that works. 6 minus 6 is 0, which is why that works. Now this is the last question which is a real question. Graphs of pair of functions intersect. Find the x-coordinates of the points of intersection without using a calculator. First off, it's two equations. And once I see two equations, it should be instinctual that I automatically think of certain properties. For example, when I see two equations, I think of elimination. I think of substitution. The fact that I see a y all by itself means that I am going to think substitution and just see what happens. Typically, whenever you get into harder math, you just kind of have to look at something and say, you know what, this looks like this process. So let me just try it out and see what happens. You can't be afraid to fall short or to mess up because, I mean, you honestly overlook a good strategy doing so. So we're going to put that here equals 5x squared minus 8x minus 3. And that looks tough, but then let's think about something that we just learned. We just learned that x squared is like an elephant and that the bigger elephant is where everything goes. So let's move our x squared over here and let's move our 2 also over there which gives us 0 equals 4x squared minus 8x minus 5. This is starting to look more familiar to me now because from what I know I can now say I think I want numbers that multiply to be negative 20 and add to make negative 8. Those numbers are 2 and 10 with a negative 10 and a positive 2. Again I said I wasn't going to go through all that stuff because you needed to kind of practice it but just trust me on that and make sure you practice this process to make it more natural. You then end up with 0 equals 4x squared plus 2x minus 10x minus 5. We split it down the middle. We end up with 2 times, I'm sorry, 2x times uh, 2x plus 1 minus 5 times 2x plus 1, which then turns into 0 equals 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 5. Once again, we have these two things set equal to 0, which means that 2x plus 1 must equal 0, or that 2x minus 5 must equal 0. And so again, you solve 2x equals negative 1, therefore x is negative 1 half. 2x equals 5, therefore x equals 5 halves. And here are your two x coordinates of the intercepts that we are talking about. Now I know that the video is getting long, but you might want to get your calculator and watch this very carefully because your calculator can actually find these for you also. So I am going to put both of these graphs into my calculator. Please follow along. That is if you want to learn how this stuff works. I'm going to put my x squared plus 2 in there. And then I'm going to arrow down and put my 5x squared minus 8x 
minus 3 in there x squared plus 2, 5x squared minus 8x plus 3 and I'm going to graph them and when you graph them you should notice I hope yep that these two things cross so I'm going to zoom in to a box that has the part that I'm looking for which is seems to be somewhere around up here and you can even move or you should be able to move up but I guess you can't but what we should notice when we look at this new box is that there should be two spots of intersection there's one and there's two and so what you do here is you can actually find the intersection by again hitting the second trace and use your common sense what do you think we're looking for I almost feel like Dora the Explorer here but you should see a word that says intersect so choose the five option and all you have to do on this is make sure you pick the curve it just says first curve so we're picking this one hit enter it says second curve which chances are it's on the other one just to make sure move your arrow till you see the X notice that this is on the second curve hit enter and the guess we always ignore but look at the value that it gives us which is negative 0.5 that's this one now how do we find this one I think I forgot to mention something important to you you want to move your X close to that point of intersection first that's what I forgot so that's the point of intersection I need so I move it over there about where it's supposed to be I hit enter notice how the second X pops up I hit enter again I hit enter one more time and look at that 2.5 which is what 5 halves is so again if you're ever looking for intersections of graphs your graph calculator also does that other than that go to MathXL get some practice get your uh, work going and get as much as you can done we do move on tomorrow but again make sure you continue to practice on your own because again we are now at the level of um, really making sure we try to master our skills or at least get to where we're ready for the quiz and assessment at the end of the week good luck